All right, it's on to chapter 10 of my autobiography, Seven Years to Life. Chapter 10 is called, What's Up with 44th Street? It was one of those nights when fall was approaching. This usually meant most windows were open in the apartments. The air was pleasantly cool and devoid of humidity. I have always found it fascinating that even though the telephone had been invented quite a while back, these, these fall nights, the adults seemed to enjoy communicating with each other by yelling out of the open windows to neighbors below or across the street. In the Celtic apartments, everybody knew everybody's business for the most part. It did not seem to matter that the content of what was being yelled from open window to open window could be embarrassing or controversial, to say the least. So things like a marital spat or a cheating husband or wife was known to practically everyone in the neighborhood, including the children. You probably have seen some examples of this in movies. This story, however, is not about gossip or the challenges some of the residents face. I just wanted to drive home the fact that most of the windows were open on this fateful night. It is a critical element to the part that one particular open window played in the second miracle that took place on 44th Street. Earlier in this collection of short stories, I wrote about street derby and the miracle I have witnessed that day. There were about six of us getting prepared to play street derby on this pleasant fall day as it approached twilight. We were on the sidewalks going through the ritual of putting on our, on our archaic roller skates that I had described to you in the earlier story. While we were doing this, one of my friends looked north up 44th Street, and he brought our attention to a procession of cars coming down the street. Quite frankly, it was a line of cars as far as the eye could see. The cars slowly proceeded down the street, and as our view became more clear, it was obviously a funeral possession, pr procession, and by the size of it, I can only assume it was for a local dignitary or gangster, quite possibly both. So the procession moved down the street in between the children and the people staring out of the windows on both sides of the street. It seemed like it would never end and that street derby would have to wait for a more opportune time. So we started to take off our skates, and as we looked around, we were shocked at just how many people were staring out of their window watching this procession of cars. The ground level of the apartments had a variety of bushes and shrubs that butted up against the building and had an approximate width of four feet before the plants came up to a cyclone fence that separated said plants from the sidewalk. So as the funeral procession moved down the street toward the church, there was an ear-shattering blast that sounded like it originated on the roof of one of the buildings. It was probably one of the older kids lighting off barrel bombs or cherry bombs. As far as I know, whoever did it was never caught. Regardless, at the sound of the blast, there was a horrific scream that caused all of us below to look up. What happened next, I still dream about even to this day. There was a young mother holding an infant looking out the window on the sixth floor, which was one floor, floor below where the blast occurred. It surprised her to the point where she shook out of control, releasing her infant baby out of the window. Due to the fact that the blast happened so close to her, most of us witnessed the baby falling out of the window. I remember thinking to myself that there was no one close enough to try and catch the baby, and at that point, I resigned myself to the fact that I was going to witness one of those things that scar people for life. In many cases, it could take the will to live away from a young mother, not to mention how in the hell do you tell the father what happened. The second thought that came to mind, because of my intimidating Catholic education, was whether or not the baby was going to be allowed into heaven. To an adult, that seems like a ridiculous thought. 
To a God-fearing ten-year-old, it was logical. Of course, the speed at which the human brain can think happens in nanoseconds, especially in situations that seem to be out-of-body experiences. The final outcome of this incident was inexplicable, though not impossible. The baby had fallen six stories, landed in the bushes, sustained a few scratches, but otherwise survived her fall unharmed without any internal industry. I had just witnessed my second miracle on 44th Street. I cannot adequately describe the look on the infant's mother's face. Other than looking at her, I could see the tears of elation and reaffirmation that life is precious and often exceeds our ability to entirely comprehend its meaning.